A third win for Tim Malier at this Giro d'Italia. And we told you, didn't we? This race is never predictable. That finish was absolutely remarkable, Robbie, wasn't it? It just had everything on it. From the moment that Jonathan Milan had a mechanical with a lap to go, I thought, well, I mean, it couldn't be possible he could win, could it? But just to make it back to the peloton was a phenomenal effort. And his team got him to the front, but you'd, you'd have to expect that he just wasn't going to quite have the legs that he normally does. And when it came to the end, I mean, when you put a cobbled finish in a sprint, you've got to think of a Belgian, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. You do really, Nathan, don't you? You boys are used to this kind of a terrain. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was actually Robbie who, who pointed out that um, the, this, this sprint rem remembered him a little bit of Nogre where, yeah, where, yeah. where, where, where Tim Lee also won with, uh, yeah, with, a, with a huge margin. So, uh, yeah, Im Im impressive sprint. No disrespect to Nokra Corsa, but uh, the setting here. A little bit more grandiose, Dan. A beautiful win for Tim Merlier there, wasn't it? And we were talking just before we came on air about the fact that last year, no sprinter managed to double up on sprint wins. And this time around, we've had two sprinters taking three victories each. Yeah, he really wanted that one. You know, he, he sort of put the doubters to rest, didn't he, by winning a stage in the final week of this race, but to do it here in Rome on the final stage, because he really wanted to be three all with yeah, Jonathan yeah. Milan as well, didn't he? I mean, he might not have been fully aware of what was going on. I'm sure they were told that Milan had the problem, but you would have seen him there towards the finish. Probably hadn't seen quite how hard his chase had been to get back on. But yeah, Milan at a point, 54 seconds, we were told, yeah. from where he was to the main peloton. Yes, he was drafting behind the cars, which does make it easier, but I would still like to see the power data that he did for that last nine kilometres. Like Robbie said, just the power needed to get to the peloton in the first place would have been immense. And you could see that when he did get to his team, obviously they were a bit fresher having been in the bunch, he was already struggling to hold the wheel because he needed to move up so quickly before the finish. Yeah, Dan, you were jokingly saying that surely he has the Strava record for this circuit now, the pace he was putting in to even get back onto the bunch. And Robbie, I want you to just explain for us why that is so difficult when the wind-up for the sprint has already begun. Well, that's the thing. You saw at the front of the peloton, the teams are all battling for position. They want to be at the front, so it just increases the pace exponentially. And when they're already riding at 60k an hour and you're more than 45 <laughs> seconds behind, <laughs> uh, the, the, the speeds you need to ride are just mind-blowing. So that he got back was, was a wonder in itself. I w I've got to admit, I would have been completely shocked had he been able to win. But apart from Tim Merlier, look at the gap that Milan has to everybody else. <laughs> it was still a phenomenal effort. He, he didn't get the re reward that it possibly deserved and it would have been Herculean and just a miracle if he could have won. Uh, but you look at Tim Merlier, I mean, what he's already done in this race and then a, a finish that, that does really suit his characteristics as a sprinter. Long, powerful, he's very, very smooth on the cobbles too. I mean, it's something he's learnt from childhood. But, uh, you know, Tim Merlier also now, of course, he's a, a last stage of a Grand Tour specialist. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, we've got a new moniker for him. At Milan, with that huge effort and not getting the stage win in the end, but three stage wins and the Chiclamino jersey, Nathan, you would imagine his disappointment will go away quite quickly, surely? It will go away quickly but still i think he's going to be he's going to be disappointed mm. and, and i'm also very curious what the problem was was yeah. it was it maybe the new bike because he has never ridden it before and then on these cobbles uh, he's a big guy the bike gets to handle a lot of a lot of hits uh, from from the from the potholes in in, in rome and uh, yeah but he's going to be he's going to be super disappointed but he can he can look back on his uh, on his giro uh, very proudly and if anyone's wondering why it took so long for him to get his bike and his team car to get there the team, the order of the team cars behind the main peloton, it's done by your best place rider in GC. So UAE, of course, will be first car, Bora Hansgrove, of Danny Martinez, Ineos Grenadiers, Vigera and so on. And because Lidl Trek don't have anyone very high up on the GC, they're a long way back in the convoy, so it made the change particularly slow for him. Yeah, it seems really unfair whenever it is pretty much a nailed on sprint stage that the sprinters' cars are so far back, unless they have a GC guy right up there. But it is the general classification that matters most. Robbie, today it was the sprint that mattered, though, so talk us through that final dash to yeah, the line. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when it all came down to it, we got the expected sprint. Um, expected result? Yes, somewhat. I mean, the two big favourites, Merlier uh, and Jonathan Milan, and the rest, you know, sort of battling for 
third, really. But where we're going to start from in this sprint, you know, unfortunately, we don't quite see where Merlier really makes his move, but you can see it starting to develop here. So here's Jonathan Milan right in the middle. He's got Consoni in front of him ready to launch, but they're sort of waiting until they come out of this, this bend to see the finish and really go. And Milan may be saying at that point, wait, 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 wanting a little bit of a shorter sprint because, of course, his legs were ready to explode, already making his own explosion out here on the left of picture is Tim Merlier. And he's come from behind them already carrying some speed and we know he likes to go early, make a big acceleration. So he's jumping around, which initially, when he passes by Milan and Consoni here, he just sort of keeps this gap closed between them. So as we roll forward, round the outside, right next to Consoni, Milan's got to pop out and try and get the wheel. But so close. see, as I like this part here, I'm just going to roll it backwards. As Merlier gets past the front, Chimolai, Movistar is coming off the lead out. Merlier gets past him, goes around, but chops back to the right pretty quickly. Look at the position that puts Milan in. He's no longer in the wheel, he's straight in the wind. So impossible to get any, any slipstream. He tries to get around and follow him. The bird is fine. Merlier has just taken off and he's got so much long-range power. And, of course, that the chase of Milan has affected him, but take nothing away from Tim Merlier. That was quite an incredible sprint. Uh, Groves won the battle of the rest for third place. Robbie, can I ask you what may seem like an obvious question to a sprinter, but as someone who's never ridden a bike race before, whenever Tim Merlier is then swerving around to the right, is he deliberately trying to shake Milan off his wheel? Is he aware that he's there? Is he deliberately trying to make it more difficult for him, or has it just worked out in his favour? You're deliberately trying to avoid having anybody pick yeah. up your slipstream, and, and that's the tactic. Once you're leading, if you are clear from everybody else, you, you can then get across towards the barriers as long as you don't impede anyone, like you did with Milano yeah. a, a week ago or so. But that was a, a really pretty nice, clean move. And he was it, what made it probably look a little bit more exaggerated was the fact that Chimolai came off the lead out and went left as Merlier was intending to hold his line. He had to ease out to the left and then he wanted to come back. So it's all sort of looked a bit more than it was, but it was a, a brilliant sprint by the Belgian. Yeah, absolutely amazing. magnificent. Sorry, it was amazing that these sprinters can think like that. Yeah, exactly. At that sort of speed at the end, when you're already so in the red, your heart rate's sky high, just to think about the small manoeuvres that are going to help you to take that win, I always find it remarkable. That's why I wanted to ask how deliberate that is or whether it's just by chance, because, again, I, I say this a lot, but it blows my mind that they've got anything in their thoughts other than the whistling of the wind and the, the lactic in the legs. 